you have nothing, you have nothing to lose. That's an interesting concept. When you have nothing, you have nothing to lose. I say I was yeah, six years old. Uh, first, my father dies, and within a couple of years, my mother uh, basically got very ill and uh, checked out. I was sent off to a uh, boarding school and uh, raised uh, by, I call it by the hand of God because there's nothing else that was guiding me. I got married for real young. We met, you know, in Puerto Rico, piss poor. Now, here's an irony she was also an orphan. So now you have two people with the same background saying, what do we have to lose? And yeah, just a couple of kids saying, we're going to go at this together. I said, I'm going to work in advertising. And I started in the mailroom of a New York-based ad agency. Do you want to believe that within 10 years I had bought that firm? Me and a buddy, we talk each other into starting a business in his dad's house from his room and we started a promotions company. And we got a $300 loan, printed a brochure, and started knocking on some doors. And believe it or not, within three to four months, we had like some of the largest clients, Procter & Gamble, uh, Unilever, some of the largest companies in Puerto Rico, and actually in the world, based in Puerto Rico, were hiring us because we had a unique service that nobody was offering. We started really out of somebody's bedroom. And uh, I think that's the beginning of my serial entrepreneurship. And uh, after that, it just we just kept growing and growing. Eventually, we bought the, the little agency that I had started in. But even that had its own adverse ending. Uh, now married with two children. And I came to Miami again, chasing this thing called Spanish television, the Spanish market. Within a year, I was already had a, an entry-level job at this company that eventually turned out to be Univision. And I started as a clerk. And out of just sheer enthusiasm, be the first one in, the last one out, work my butt off. Um, I was a vice president of Univision by the time I was 30 years old. I was one of the, the youngest vice presidents. I was just a rock star. I could make it rain. Uh, then I went across the street to Telemundo, the, the competing network. I must have had a half a billion dollar PL. And again, that wasn't enough. That company, Telemundo, at the time, went bankrupt. I was inside. I was the number three guy in the entire organization. The company filed for Chapter 11. One of my clients literally approached me one, one afternoon and said, Hey, Joe, you want to start a business together? Since Telemundo's bankrupt anyway, what do you have to lose? And I said, what are we going to do? And he said, I don't know. You'll figure it out. I started listening to the market. And the market said, no, 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 we need a media buyer. And off to the races we went. And we had all kinds of clients. It was awesome. Until, again, adversity showed up. And when the dot-com balloon burst, we all ran for the hills, and we all ran out of money, and we all went out of business. So there I was, basically broke. I'm 42, and I've never seen this kind of disaster, this kind of train wreck. So cried for a little bit, and within a couple of years, I was starting this company today, which is DMG Solutions. Back we were, and reinvented ourselves one more time and sort of our latest iteration has been through data. As an entrepreneur, I would, I would pose to you and, and a question that I always pose to anybody thinking of having their own business, which is, what is your thoughts gonna say? Well, I sound like the guy with the guts in the family. My wife is the one with the guts in the family. She was always the let's go for it you need a person that will support your every decision and you make them together for good and for bad i mean we've been rich and poor several times but we've been at it together 
as a person, of course, it's it's enriched my life to no degree. I mean, I I have somebody that loves me. I can't say I I I can't say I know that feeling since my father died when I was six years old. So I know for a fact I couldn't have done it by myself. I said, I bet you I have a lot to offer to a university type town. So I visited the University of Florida. And when they leaned into it, I basically didn't think about it much either. Our business lawyer in Miami thought I was insane. My kids, they thought we'd lost it. But I said, but I want to be a teacher. And I'm going to be a good teacher. That they couldn't debate. This has been nothing other than one big entrepreneur entrepreneurial experience. Started out thinking it was one way, it's facing in a whole different way. And we're opening shop again, employing and working with students. The adrenaline rush that comes with adversity tends to manifest itself at first as pain and a lot of discomfort. But by now I know the, the fruits. So there, there, there's a sweet ending to it. So am I looking forward to some of the adversity? Sure. Is it going to be easy? Am I going to regret it a thousand times? Sure. Will the ending be the right ending? More than likely. By now I know that the discomfort is always followed by God.